Hello, I'm Tammy Shianbade, and this is Ask Tammy Live, where we discuss the best ways to establish your business, protect your name, and keep your profits. Welcome to those of you who are joining. This is a very special edition of Ask Tammy Live because this video has exclusive content for the Tuesdays Together Houston community. I had the privilege and honor of spending some time with them earlier this week, and it was just great. But I wanted to make sure that we delved a little bit deeper in, into one of the questions that came up. One of the things we discussed was trademarking your own personal name with regards to your business. Is it something that you should do? Should you name your business after yourself? Now, I have some content available online about this topic, but I wanted to go into a little bit more detail and kind of give a few more considerations that one should take to mind when trying to make this decision. So when you are trying to decide whether you should name your business after yourself, you should think about three things. First, trademark law. Second, marketing. And third, your exit strategy and or potential investors. We'll take each of those topics one at a time and really delve in and see if we can really grapple with this question. Now, the first thing that we said you should consider is your trademark law. And the question that you want to really understand is, will I be able to have exclusive rights to this brand? All right. If I try to trademark it, will trademark law protect me? The general answer to that question is no. Trademark law says that they will not give exclusive protection to someone's personal name. You don't have an inherent right to your name or to the exclusive use of your name just because it was given to you at birth. The exception to that rule is when, number one, you have, you've used this name in business, and two, it has gained a secondary meaning, so as that people now associate your name with a particular service or good. So that really explains why celebrities are able to trademark their name. For example, Beyonce has trademarked her name because whenever we hear Beyonce, we associate it with her goods and her services and the work that she provides in her business pursuits as an entertainer. And so again, we have this use in business and we have this secondary um, meaning that has been associated with it. The same thing can be said with regards to Chanel. So they were able to gain that exclusive right over time. And that's usually what happens. It's not something that you can get right off the bat. It's something that usually with advertising and useful use or smart use, you may be able to develop after a while, but it's not automatic. A perfect example of this would be a little situation between Kylie Jenner and Kylie Minogue. So Kylie Minogue was a really famous singer back in the 1980s, and she's still around, and she's still very much alive, very much present. Kylie Jenner is a reality TV show person, um, who has now broken into the cosmetics world and really has taken the world by storm with her business um, acumen. So we have these two Kylies, right? Well, Kylie Jenner decided that she was going to try to trademark her name. Kylie Minogue was not having that. So she basically stopped that and blocked it in the court. And she said, hey, I've been using this name first. And that's something that you'll get to see over time is that with regards to trademark law, they're really conscious as to who used the name first and whether it's something that someone can have an exclusive right to. So the law and so the courts decided that they would not grant Kylie Jenner exclusive rights to trademark her name because someone else has already used it in business and so she doesn't have the exclusive secondary meaning associated with it. All right? So that goes to our trademark law considerations. Will you be able to have exclusive rights so that you can stop other people? Because remember, when we talked on Tuesday, we discussed how trademark law is all about making sure people don't get these things confused. We don't like confusion. All right. So again, first consideration is trademark law. The second thing that you want to consider is you want to consider just marketing in general and whether this would be the best thing for your business. The things that I'd like you to ask yourself is, will this really distinguish me in commerce? Will I really stand out? Is my name unique enough that it won't blend into all the other people who have named businesses after themselves? The second thing that I want you to consider is I want you to think about what your audience would trust. 
who your potential customer, your potential client, do they prefer a personal name or do they prefer a corporate business separate entity? Because that's really, really important when it comes to deciding what you want to do. Now, I've looked at a lot of our current marketers and some of them create new marketing agencies, some of them go by their names, and you have a wide spectrum of different things that people choose to do. But I do want to share with you that there are many people who start off on this journey choosing to try and do their name because that's the most natural thing and then end up regretting it for reasons that we'll discuss later. And so they realize that for marketing purposes, it's okay, but it, there's a cap. They might not be able to market to the same level of consumer that they want to once they've grown because they're going about it based off of their own personal brand. Now, I also want you to realize that it is possible to be the face for your company without having your company named after you. And a perfect example of this would be Steve Jobs and Apple. So Apple had its own separate corporate identity, but a a lot of the things that people really connect with is are the philosophies and the thoughts or the philosophy and the thoughts that Steve Job kind of brought into the company. And so we have the same thing with Elon Musk. You know, everybody likes Tesla, but he has his own very strong personality that supports his brand. And so you want to have those considerations when you're deciding whether you should name your business after yourself. The last thing that I want you to consider is I want you to think about your exit strategy and or potential investors. What do I mean? Well, when you're starting a business, it's really important to figure out whether you want this business to, it's just, well, it's important to start thinking about whether you want to sell this business in the end. Like, what's your end goal? A lot of times people don't think about this and it does become relevant, especially if your company grows and becomes extremely successful. It's not uncommon for someone to decide to sell their business to someone else or to get outside investors in order to promote growth. Now, what happens when that occurs is that now your separate corporate entity has an asset and that asset is your name. When you decide to sell your business, most investors are going to want your name to go with it. That's why you have people like Kate Spade before she passed away. She had sold the rights to her business and her name. So Kate Spade was in, it was in existence without Kate Spade actually working behind it. And when Kate Spade wanted to start a new fashion line, she couldn't name it after herself because the rights to her name had already been, been sold. And she's not the first person to deal with this. This has also occurred with Joseph Abode. He was a designer as well. And so what happened was he decided to sell his company and sell the rights to his name. Years down the line, he decides he wants to start another fashion line called J-A-Z or Jazz, right? And he says that the name will be Jazz, but it will say in a tagline, you know, produced by Joseph Abode. So he decides that that's what he wants to do. Well, guess what? His company that he sold sues him for the rights to his name and says, no, you can't do that because people will think that these are the same brands. Now, he lost. He, he At first, he lost and eventually was able to appeal and get limited rights. But it was something that took a lot of time and a lot of effort. And again, many people kind of go through this and end up not having the ability to really fight these battles. And so I say all of this to say you really want to think deeply about whether you want to name a business after yourself. It's something that many successful people are able to do. So I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm saying you should think about it. Now, I hope all of this information has been really helpful to you, but that's not where I want to end it. I really, really enjoyed my time with the Tuesdays Together Houston community. And so in order to show my appreciation, I wanted to give you a little gift for the next three days. If you schedule a business consultation of some form with me, you can use the code Tuesdays Together to save 50% on that consultation. Now that's only for a limited time, only for the next three days, and only for the Tuesdays Together community. Put in the code Tuesdays Together, all caps, when you're checking out and you'll be able to save and actually move forward with your business because I'd love to sit down with you. And as you heard me say earlier, I help people establish their businesses, protect their names and keep their profits. And I'd love to do the same with you. 
Additionally, if you want to follow me and hear and keep, you know, keep up with what I'm doing and hear all of this news and information and content, feel free to follow me. There's so many different platforms where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. I recently released this Ask Tammy podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio and CastBox, and it's on SoundCloud. So there's so many different ways where you can stay plugged in. Plus, you can subscribe to receiving news and updates by visiting my website, www.toslegal.com. So again, you can ask, follow me on any of those social media platforms or you can visit my website and you can schedule a consultation and save 50% off. I hope again that this has been extremely helpful to you. Please feel free to leave questions at the bottom, comments, let me know if this is helpful. And you know, and also feel free to let me know different types of topics you would love to hear covered on Ask Tammy Live, because this is something that I do at least twice a month, where I'm answering questions, giving you stories, giving you feedback, helping you understand the best ways to establish your business, protect your name, and keep your profits. I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope you have an amazing weekend. We'll talk soon. Bye.